People ask me all the time, Jeff, how do I get started with no money? And I have some bad news. You have to get some money, get a job, get walk the neighbor's dog, like mow some lawns. So you have to get, get some money. This video is going to be about how to increase your ability to get money. If you have no money, we're going to try to get you to a baseline where you not only have enough to live, but you actually have some surplus so that you have some breathing room, so that you have some energy, so that you can actually go do the awesome things that I know you're capable of. Inside of my company, Entre Institute, where we teach tens of thousands of people about entrepreneurship and how to you know, kind of move their life forward and, and move a business forward in this world, we talk about something called the three phases of legacy. This is a really, really important concept to understand. It doesn't matter who you are, what you're trying to do, um, you know, if you're trying to move forward, I, mean, I think everybody's trying to move forward in their life to build something of meaning, create a life that they're proud of, leave a legacy, make a mark, make a difference, do something to have some impact, right? There basically are three phases that you're going to have to go through. They are income, growth, and wealth. And real quickly, I'll basically just sum them up like this. The first phase, income, which is where like 99% of people are, um, in their life, even if even people that have, you know, some money, a lot usually in order to do the things that they would like to do in their life, they need to go back to the income phase and think about how to create more income. Um, but anyway, income is all about figuring out how to create surplus income. Most of us have a life that naturally adjusts to at or slightly below, uh, or, or sorry, at or slightly above our level of income. So we have, most of us have a level of income. And if you're watching a video about how to start with no money, you may have no income, or you may be watching this video because like I'm saying, you have an income, but you have no extra money because your life matches your income. But most of us have an income. And then we have a life that, you know, naturally rises to the level of our income and we're spending our money and we're paying our bills and we're going out to eat and we're doing our stuff. And, but we're always kind of looking for that little extra. We always want a little more. We're, we're emotional beings. So we kind of like have impulses and feelings that aren't totally rational. So typically our life gets a little ahead of our income. But anyways, the point is we're going to talk about how to create surplus. Like I said, the two other phases, growth and wealth. Growth is about taking surplus income and reinvesting it to create more surplus so that now that you're using money as a leverageable tool to create more money. And then the wealth phase is really more about starting to diversify and, and reinvest some of that income into something that isn't about using surplus to create more surplus, but using surplus to create stability, to create security, to you know create predictability, to create generational wealth, all the stuff that happens in the wealth phase. But like I said, for 95, probably 95 to 99% of people, it's all about the income phase. And I actually have a pretty aggressive way that I like to look at this, which is you need to figure out how to get your income to the place where it is five times what it costs you to live. We call this the awesome life number. And it's basically saying, okay, in order for, for me to live, I want to live where I make, I spend this much to live, like, and that much is 20%, one fifth. Because by the way, if you're making enough money that you're making five times what you need to live, you're probably making enough money that you're going to be in a high tax bracket. So you should just assume that two fifths of what you make, you're going to have to pay to taxes. And then the next two fifths, you're going to want to have four. It's that's, that's the surplus, right? That you're using to create more income and ultimately to invest once you get to the wealth phase too. And that 20%, that one fifth, that's what you need to live off of. And I know that seems like ridiculously aggressive for a lot of people, but I have found working with thousands and thousands of people and looking at thousands and thousands of life realities that for most people, if they don't have that sort of aggressive shift in their mindset around producing a lot more income and creating a lot of surplus income, there's just not enough time. We're only going to live to be 80 or 90 years old. And even across decades and decades, if you look at the, the rate of savings and the rate of inflation and the rate of return on most people's savings and investments, like there's just not enough time unless you really, really dramatically increase your income to ever get into the phase, ultimately the phase of wealth that you want to be, right? So that's the context for this. That's why the question of how do I get started with no money, the only answer is 
you got to go get money. You got to go get a lot of money. I would, I would venture to say that most of the people that I talk to in this world about whatever their particular situation is, the remedy is you got to go get a lot more money. It creates so many options. And so what this video, what we're going to do now is look at skills that you can use from wherever you are, whatever place you're in to increase your ability dramatically to get more money based on whatever circumstance you find yourself in. But if you find yourself in the, you know, any number times zero is zero, right? So if you have no money, like step one, get a job, start getting some money coming in and then watch this video and let's talk about how to amplify that. Okay, so before we dive into the actual skills, the actual things you can do to increase your earning potential in this world, I wanna just kind of call out a problem that I see so much, it's so prevalent, which is in the modern era, the world of social media, you know, this day and age, we live in an era of what I would basically call immediate gratification. Like our, and there's all kinds of studies about this, the human being's ability to delay gratification has been dramatically reduced in the modern digital era, the era of the internet, but it's also the single greatest predictor of future success. Our ability to delay gratification is the, the most significant or the most predictive indicator of how successful we'll be in the future. And so you think about living in this era that we live in where social media is always showing us the highlights of people's lives. It's showing us you know, what the really successful person has to say from the hilltop of great success, about great success, to all the little people who don't have great success, right? Like we live in this world now where we're bombarded with this imagery of success and we never get imagery. You know, the subconscious mind learns through pictures. That's why it's so uh, addictive to, or addicted to all this image-driven media, right? That's why video and pictures do so much better than text. The subconscious mind is stimulated and are and literally wired through imagery. In fact, the subject conscious mind has no processing center for language. So we're seeing all these images of success in the here and now, and we're almost never seeing images of people before they were successful. Like if you Google Oprah Winfrey, or frankly, you Google Jeff Lerner, like you Google any successful person, you're gonna find just image after image, or if you go look at their social profile of after they were successful or images of them being successful or you know anyone you pick that you want to learn about success from it's 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 very unlikely you're going to see a whole lot of pictures not just words not just stories but pictures images videos of what their life looked like before they were successful but in reality that's what we should be trying to look at the most is find people before I mean, I guess you can't find someone who's going to be successful before they were successful, but you should, this is why I love books. I love biographies and autobiographies of successful people where you really dig into what it took, what was their life like, what was their experience like before they became successful. You have to get obsessed with studying success before it looked like success rather than just staring at success now that it looks like success, which is unfortunately what the internet presents us with. And that's one of the reasons I think that consciousness has been so skewed in the modern world where we just aren't willing to do the long, gritty, painful work that it takes to become successful like all the successful people did that we're looking at, okay? So that said, let's dig into the actual things you can do right now to increase your earning potential in this world. First of all, whatever environment you're in, whatever you're doing to make money, I guarantee you, somehow, some way, something is being sold. There is no business that exists where people get paid, you know, the employees, the owners, the shareholders, whatever, where products or services aren't being sold. So whatever environment you're in, I would strongly recommend you find where is the money being generated in that business and try to volunteer or train for or somehow get exposure to or become a part of the part of the business where it actually produces the revenue that everybody else gets paid. This one idea of understanding that, you know, in any business, in any environment where money's moving around, there's a part of the business, call it, think of it as the revenue department, right? It's the part of the business where the money gets made. And then there's all the other parts of the businesses where the orders get fulfilled, the customers get supported, the, you know, paychecks get cut, the legal and compliance happens, like, you know, there's all these different moving parts in a company or in a business, right? The closer you are to the center of revenue, 
the more likely you are to get paid more, which means, you know, starting to volunteer, like ask your boss, ask your manager, hey, how can I get closer to where the revenue is generated and what skills can I develop or how can I use my skills to try to drive more revenue and more value for the business? Typically, those skills that are gonna get you closer to the value center of the business have to do with three areas, sales, marketing, or I would say finance, like strategic finance, right? Like basically, if you wanna create more value and therefore receive more value from the work that you're doing, it's gonna be about, mo about figuring out within the business that you're in how you can help them market, meaning connect to more potential customers and create more demand for the product, or, and or sell, meaning convince more uh, prospective customers to actually take the action or make the commitment and generate more revenue for the product or service and or finance, which is gonna be, you know, finance and resource management, which is gonna be about creating efficiencies in the business that allow the business to create more profit, even if they're not necessarily creating more sales. If you're going in that direction, you're moving in the direction of creating more income and generating more money for yourself. If you're not moving in that direction, you know, it's likely that you're gonna be on the cadence of getting that typical one or 2% per year raise, which doesn't even keep up with inflation and constantly feeling like you're behind. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to let you know you can get a free copy of my book, The Millionaire Shortcut, which will show you the fastest way to become a millionaire in the new economy. And there's a special link just for this episode in the description. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. The next thing you can do when you're looking at the specific skills that you want to develop, and this is true whether you're in a business or you're like you're in a job or you're like, hey, I want to do my own thing. I want to start my own business or go out and, and do a, a side hustle or, or whatever, is to start to value the skills that you have and that you want to develop based on three criteria. These are the three criteria that determine how much a skill will pay you. And again, this is true whether you're in a job or you're out on your own. The first is how common is the skill? And there frankly are two ways to make a skill uncommon. Either pick a skill that's already fairly uncommon or become really good at that skill where even if the skill, even if the thing itself is common, I would say like sales, like sales is pretty common. There's a lot of sales, but great salespeople are rare. So you can make it uncommon by being really good at it, or you can start with something like, I don't know, I'm going to become a nuclear physicist or something. And then that just in and of itself is, it's fairly rare. But the point is, uh, you know, part one of how valuable a skill is, is how common is it or, or how rare is it, right? But part two, and the rarity couples with this, because like I could say, oh, well, I have a, a really rare skill. I'm a goldfish groomer. I know how to get the fins on a goldfish to look just so and be so perfect, right? But part two is how essential is that skill for the particular people who need it? So like not everybody's ever going to need any given skill, right? You're not gonna find a skill that everybody needs. But you find a skill and say, for the people who need this skill, how badly do they need this, right? So as an example, knowing how to repair a heart valve, there aren't that many people that need heart valves repaired at any given time. But the people that need heart valves repaired, it's really, really essential to them that they find someone who can repair a heart valve. So you might say, okay, Repairing heart valves, that fares too well. That fares well on the first two categories, right? It's fairly rare. There aren't that many people that know how to do it. And it's extremely essential. The people that need it, they have to have it. Now, there's a lot of specialized schooling involved when it comes to becoming a you know cardiac surgeon, but I'm just using that as an example. You could be in a business and say, okay, uh, sales is fairly common skill, but I know that businesses have to have sales. It's the frankly, the skill that most businesses need the most of is sales or marketing because without it, nobody can get paid, right? And then I can look at the business that I'm in and I can say, okay, like depending on what type of sales it is, maybe it's retail sales, maybe it's phone sales, maybe it's uh, you know consumer-driven sales where it's more marketing-based like consumer products or even like a, like a restaurant, right? Like it's not like you have to be, but, but even in a restaurant, like depending on what kind of restaurant it is, you have the wait staff that are, you know, they can do well based on learning sales tactics. There's did you know there's literally specific questions that a waiter can ask to take like five seconds per, per customer that they serve. They can literally double the amount of tips that they get. Like 
You can become great at sales in any organization, or you can become uh, you know, more valuable in the marketing department in any organization by understanding what drives the demand for the customers, or you can understand how the business works in such a way that you can start to add value by helping them optimize or be more efficient or you know, essentially figure out how to get more revenue without spending more money or how to maintain the same revenue while spending less money. Like you can always be moving in the direction of that center, that, that center of gravity within any business and increasing your skills. And then the third criteria that determines the value of a skill is actually what I would call how much value capital have you created with that skill. So you take a skill and you say, okay, uh, you know, part one, how rare is the skill? Part two, how essential is the skill to the people who need it? And part three is how much value have I actually created with the skill? And value is created through a skill, through a combination of two things, right? How good am I at it and how much have I done it? So it's quality plus experience. So you find the skill that's reasonably rare. It's not, it's not, or, or let's say it's in demand in the, whatever organization you're in, you, you find the skill that people in the organization or the customers of the organization really, really need, and then you become proficient at it. You increase your value capital at it by basically doing it more and doing it better. That's it. That's a simple analysis you can do of your life, of your situation inside of any business, inside of any life, inside of any circumstance. Say, okay, how do I produce more skills that produce more results, that create more value capital, that ultimately gets me paid more? And then the final thing that you can do, and this is sort of a little bit of a woo-woo metaphysical quality about it, but it's, it's just a proven fact, is just becoming a better person. It's literally proven that by becoming more, you know, communicatively empathetic, having developing your emotional intelligence, developing your soft skills, your people skills, um, working on yourself physically, having better health, literally like losing weight or, you know, not about, it's not about being vain, but it's about being healthy, being vibrant, being energetic. Just working on those things in general actually makes you more attractive. It, it makes you more, uh, it makes you not just more attractive, but like in the, in the you know, superficial sense of it, but it helps you attract more people, more opportunities, more money, more good things into your life by leveling yourself up personally and, and physically and obviously professionally developing your professional skills. This is why I always talk about the three Ps, physical, personal, and professional, that every single day you should be doing something to move yourself forward in these three areas of life. And if you do that consistently over time, plus you maintain this value focus in the business where you're focusing on the right skills and you're moving closer to the center of the gravity where the revenue is generated, that's it. That's, that's like the ultimate formula for maximizing your income, maximizing your value in the world as high as humanly possible and starting to create the surplus so that you never again have to go out and watch a video called, how do I get started without money? Okay. So I hope that's helpful to you. If you're coming at this from a place of not having any money, I hope that wasn't discouraging for you. It was meant to be encouraging and inspiring that there's a lot you can do in your life to get more money. But the key to getting started without money is to get out of the place where you have no money, right? It's to, to abandon this, this pie in the sky way of thinking that says like, oh, magically, it's somehow just gonna work. That's like, it's literally like saying, well, how can I get started with no oxygen? Like you're sitting there like choking to death going, well, how can I get started with no oxygen? You have to breathe. You have to be able to breathe, right? You have to have oxygen to live. You have to have money to go out into the world and do stuff and make an impact, okay? So thanks for your time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to get, get more stuff like this, more stuff on how to level up your life, how to in increase your income, how to uh, unlock your potential across all areas of life, I'd love if you'd subscribe to the channel. And definitely leave me a comment or question below. I love interacting with my audience. Thanks so much for your time. I'll see you in the next video. Hey, if you liked this video, then you're gonna love this video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to get started with affiliate marketing in reasonable terms and realistic terms, no, no hype and all BS aside. It's like the closest thing there is to a hands-off, uh, stress-free business because 